The Osmo Pocket is a pretty cool little camera. It's a lot different from most of the cameras out there. Now the biggest difference between the Osmo Pocket and other cameras is the fact that this is such a tiny little camera and it has such a great little gimbal. It's the gimbal that makes the Osmo Pocket so cool. Now the best thing about having a gimbal is adding some movement to your shots. If you're not adding movement to your shots with a gimbal, you're really not taking full advantage of having a gimbal camera. Sometimes it's fun to get a little bit creative and maybe a little bit weird when it comes to getting your shots. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dave and this is Red Arrow Media. Now, let's take a look at some of the cool gimbal moves you can get with your Osmo Pocket. Now, I promise later on in the video, we'll take a look at the more standard shots you can get with a gimbal. But I did promise you weird earlier on, so let's get weird with the Osmo Pocket. First up, I want to show you some dolly shots or some slider shots with the Osmo Pocket. Now, this is a simple little dolly that I picked up. On Amazon, I actually bought this before I owned the Osmo Pocket. I used it with my GoPro and some other cameras that I had. But it really works well with the Osmo Pocket. I mean, it has a gimbal on it, so then you add a dolly to it. Now your shots should be pretty darn smooth. Now it's got some really great roller blade wheels and it'll help you really smooth out your shots. You just gotta make sure your surface is nice and smooth. This was a very cheap dolly. Don't go spending a lot of money. You've already spent plenty of money on accessories, so you don't wanna spend a lot. This was, I think, $15 on Amazon, and it gets me great results. I just put it on a little mount, and I'm ready to go. You can switch it up to flashlight mode. You can do different things with it. One of my favorite things is to use it almost like a slide, but to set it up with your tracking on. Now, if you move it from side to side, it will track your object. Now, I did it with a little cooking here, which is a little bit different, and the lighting was pretty good in this shot, but Having a tiny little gimbal on this got me some really cool shots that I was really, really happy with. I'm not sure if we're gonna use it in the bigger production, but the fact that I have it from such a tiny little camera with a tiny little sensor, I think that's pretty neat. Now, I did use it on a slider, which I was using my other camera for most of my beauty shots of the food. Now, it looks a little bit ridiculous to have a big slider and then a tiny little camera on top of the slider, and I was pretty happy with it. Now this next idea is way out there. I had to create a little contraption to get this shot. I call this the around the world or the Atlanta shot. If you're familiar with the Atlanta TV show on FX, it had a great promo running maybe two years ago where they're doing these flip over scenes. It was awesome. Now, this shot looks a lot better if you have a person or somebody as a subject in the front of your frame while you make the moves from left to right or right to left. But I thought it was kind of a cool idea and I wanted to give it a try. All I did was get a piece of wood and a piece of PVC piping, attach my uh, Osmo Pocket to it, and I tried it going from over left to right, right to left, vice versa. Now, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. It was a little bit rough around the edges, but I think for the most part, if you look at it, the shot is fairly smooth. There just wasn't a lot of excitement in my frame. I was shooting more landscape stuff, one of the best things about shooting this was how people watching me reacted. They thought I was absolutely out of it, which I'm okay with because I think when we use the Osmo Pocket, we all look a little odd. When you add this contraption, I looked a lot more odd than usual, but I'm okay with that. It did give me some results that I did like. What I found best was put it in FPV mode, and that way it allowed the gimbal to go side to side without a lot of shakiness, which is kind of funny because when we put it in first person view mode you imagine that the camera is going to move around as we move around so i was surprised that it stayed the most stable when i had it in other modes follow mode and other things and tilt lock the camera the gimbal head would move all over the place and it wasn't giving me the shots so i put it in fpv mode and it worked pretty well i think i would have changed things up a little bit but the fact that this didn't cost me a lot of money and i had a lot of fun shooting it sure i looked weird but i'm okay with that and I think uh, if I practice with this, I'll get a little bit better and I'll get the shots that I want. When you slow things down, they look a little bit better, of course. And uh, at the end of the day, I just wanted to get something more interesting out of the shot. And I think I got that. Now, another creative way to use the Osmo is to put it on a stick. An Osmo on a stick. Sounds pretty delicious, doesn't it? Now, I found that if you have a selfie stick or the extension rod that DJI makes, or for myself, I just created something out of PVC piping add a little attachment and I'm good to go. 
Now, I find this is a good way to get more creative with your shots. You can put things in and out of objects. You can do a jib shot. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do with having a little bit of an extension on your Osmo Pocket. Now, I found if you're shooting, if you put it in flashlight mode, you get some really neat shots. If you do a little bit of twisting with it, slow that down, it can give you some incredibly creative shots with just adding a simple stick to your Osmo Pocket. I even use my selfie stick in the winter time when I was skating on the Rideau Canal here in Ottawa. It gave me great results. I was very, very happy with it. The best thing about it is that you set it up, you hold it at a low angle, and you really have no idea what your shot's going to look like. You're hoping it's the right angle and everything's going to look good. When you get it back later on, you can look at it, and sure enough, it looked pretty good. I slowed it down a bit to give the shot that I want. It was a little bit cinematic that I wanted, and I was really, really happy. The ice was a little bit bumpy, so that meant I was a little bit bumpy. Holding this selfie stick was a little bit bumpy, but for the most part, I think it kind of smoothed things out, and it looks kind of neat and gives yourself a different shot than you, you wouldn't normally be able to get by holding the Osmo Pocket in your hand. Now, be careful. Make sure your mount is attached properly because you don't want to drop it. But I think if you look at the footage, it looks kind of neat and it gives you something a little bit different than just shooting with your regular Osmo Pocket. Now my next suggestion comes with a disclaimer. Please be careful. This is the Osmo Pocket on rollerblades or inline skates. Now please be careful if you're going to try this. Now I'm Canadian and I'm pretty familiar being on skates. I play a lot of hockey, do a lot of skating, so I know how to skate on rollerblades and ice skates of course. But being out on rollerblades or inline skates out on the road, make sure you're being careful. But you can also be very, very careful with the Osmo Pocket because it's super easy to fall when you're on rollerblades. All it takes is one little rock and you're going over the side. But it can give you some fantastically smooth footage. Check this out. I'm following the kids here and all I'm doing is holding the Osmo Pocket in my hand while I'm rollerblading. The rollerblades are pretty smooth. And the kids are, of course, rolling pretty smooth as well. So that way I can get that smooth footage. I've also tried it while I was on a bike holding it with the kids on a bike. And I think the results are pretty well. We were on a little bit of a bumpy path, so it wasn't the greatest. But for the most part, having a roller blade and your Osmo Pocket together, I think it's a pretty good combination. Okay, so I did promise to talk about the standard shots you can get with a gimbal camera. Now, you can get this with a stabilizer and a gimbal, but of course, with the Osmo Pocket, it's all built in. So you can get some really, really great shots. The first one I want to talk about is the push-in and the pull-out. Very simple. Just like the name says, all you do is simply go nice and slow and push into your subject. Now, right here, it really helps that I have my subject in a location that I think it's kind of nice. It frames my daughter and my son up pretty nicely, and I'm able to go nice and slow to get the shot that I want. Of course, you want to walk nice and smooth to get the shot as smooth as possible. Everyone talks about the ninja walk or the cat walk. I'm no ninja. I'm no cat. For me, I actually like to describe my walk with a gimbal as the holding in a fart walk. For me, I look super uncomfortable when I'm doing this walk. I'm trying to go heel toe, keep my knees slightly bent, my elbows slightly bent, get like a shock absorber kind of feeling going to it. And there's still going to be a little bit of movement no matter how good you are. But if you practice, you'll get a little bit better. And of course, once you slow it down, it really smooths out your shot. So for this, do a simple little push into your subject and then just the opposite. Do a nice slow push pull out from your subject they give you that really really cool shot now of course your background's really really going to help with this and the fact i did this on the bridge you had the bridge beams going across and stuff i think that kind of added a little bit of texture and a little bit of layering to the shot to make it really really work now i want to thank my kids i had to pay them off in cookies to be my models for this shot and they really did a great job so thanks kids now the next most popular shot with a gimbal is the parallax shot now this is where you go from one side to the other trying to almost a round the world shot with your subject in the middle. Now this example isn't the greatest because I don't go all the way around and there's no foreground in front of my son here. But I think you see as he's looking out over the creek and I'm following him around and he's not moving, it gives you a great idea of the, the levels of texture and, and layers that are going on in the background and the foreground and as I'm moving from side to side. Now when you slow it down, it smooths out your footage a little bit and it gives you kind of a neat effect. 
Now I talked about this a little bit earlier, but the low angle shot is great with a gimbal. You just got to be careful because you're holding this camera very low to the ground. And with the Osmo Pocket, the tiny little gimbal camera is really exposed. So you got to be careful. You can use this for walking shots. I used it for walking, for biking, and for skating, of course. And I think that gives you a real neat looking shot that you just can't get with a regular cam. You can't really hold a DSLR down there. And if you were holding a regular gimbal, and doing it with yourself, that's gonna be pretty hard. But with the Osmo Pocket, you're able to do it and get the shot that you want because it's so light and it's easy to add it to a selfie stick or something like that and just hold it to the right angle and pray that your shot works. But that low angle shot is really, really cool when it comes to gimbal shots. The next one is pretty simple. It's the ground up shot. That's where you start on the ground. Hopefully the ground has some texture or some dirt or, or something kind of cool. And you just ground up and you slowly move up to your subject. Now I did this with my daughter on this wooden bridge. You have those wooden beams that look really, really cool. They're a little bit weathered. And then you slowly come up and reveal your subject. The best thing about this is when the viewers watching this, they don't know what they're watching and they see that slow movement. If you get nice and smooth and steady with it and you come right up to your subject, it kind of reveals their subject and makes a kind of a cool little effect. And one of the most popular shots with a gimbal, any gimbal, is the jib shot. It's actually almost ruin jib operators. I'm just joking. Jib operators do a great job and the jib shots that they get look fantastic and it's really, really hard to replicate that with a gimbal but you can do it and you can get some results that look similar to a jib. Now, of course, having this attached to a stick or a monopod or a selfie stick or something like that really helps. Now, it allows you to get a different view of your subject with a high angle or a side angle and have that camera movement affecting your move while you still see your subject and your subject comes in the frame. Lastly, when it comes to getting great gimbal shots is to not beat yourself up too much. Any gimbal is going to give you a bit of a headache at times. The Osmo Pocket is no different. It's a great little camera and having a gimbal will give you great creative shots. But because you have a gimbal, there's a good chance that your shot's going to get screwed up by something. Either the gimbal doesn't move exactly the way you want or you don't move exactly the way you want. But that's okay. Don't beat yourself up for it. Sometimes I take three or four times to get the shot that I want. And sure enough, the last shot is the best one. That just happens. Don't beat yourself up because if you're getting negative, you're not going to get into your creative headspace and you're not going to get the shot that you want. Having and using a gimbal can be difficult. It can be great, get you great stuff, but it can be tough. So don't beat yourself up if you're not getting the shots right away. Just practice it. You'll get it. Anyways, thanks for watching. I really appreciate taking the time to watch my videos. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, that's great too. I really do enjoy making these videos and I like interacting with people in the comment section. So if you have a question or anything, please let me know. I'm always responding in the comments and I think that's a lot of fun because this is a great community. We're all trying to learn about new gear and different techniques. I'm always trying to learn new things. So I think that's great. Anyways, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.